Hi guys, Rap Critic here, and today we're going to switch things up with an album breakdown for Riz's second album, Digital Bullet, from 2001. As sort of a companion piece to my first video about the genius you can watch here. Now let's start off by addressing the state of the Wu-Tang Clan by the time today's album came out. Cause see, for five years from 93 to 97, Wu was dominating the rap game. Led by the RZA and backed by his dark, crypting, menacing beats and the now famous five year plan that collectively pushed them to the forefront of hip hop, basically becoming synonymous with the genre by the late 90s. However, keeping such a huge group together proved to be a bit much to handle, as clashes over creative differences and financial disagreements put rifts in the group that made it harder and harder to keep the group cohesive as a unit. Also, Riz's basement where he made his beats got flooded. Twice. And the second incident proved to be especially ill-timed. Amongst other concerns, the worst of it was the Hot 97 incident. See, they were supposed to be on tour with Rage Against the Machine in Europe, but the radio station all but forced them to do their show without actually covering the expenses for flying them back to the States. So while they ended up doing the show, some of the members got heated about the coercion due to how it screwed over their overseas money and aired their grievances live against the station, getting the crowd to chant Fuck Hot 97, a move that would lead to the group being blacklisted for from the station's airwaves for over a decade, pulling the spotlight from them and inspiring even more internal conflict, leading to a bunch of other stuff I can't get into right now, but, well, to sum it up in a kung fu sample from the genius's first album. And amongst all this division, Rizza, the beatsmith and navigator of the group, decided to take time to go it alone with his own solo outings, changing up his beat production style and sound in order to reinvent himself as Bobby Digital, a strange kind of anti-hero-like alter ego to the Rizza. In fact, there's a full-length movie Rizza made where Bobby Digital was supposed to be a hood vigilante saving the day with some strange elixir and an analog signal or something like that. The movie's apparently impossible to dig up, cause after one night when he came up at him in a specially dusted session, he looked at the finished product and thought it was such utter garbage that he scrapped the whole thing, so it's not available in full anywhere other than some really telling clips I could find. Hey, I know who the fuck you are. Who the fuck do I know you from? This your fucking ass, huh? Although, as a Wu completist, I still most definitely want to see this cheesy ass looking movie, so if anyone out there's got the hookup, let me know. All I definitively know is, a vocal chunk of the fanbase didn't gel with this new direction of producing, with more stripped down soul sample based production and less dark grimy beats. The brighter shift prompted many to think he was going all out commercial on us. But it wasn't his debut album, In Stereo, that I had heard first. No, no, no. It was the second LP, Digital Bullet, that made it to my ears first. An album that showcased an egregious dip in quality, which really drove home how the mighty had fallen. And since it's my channel, I decided to share that disappointment with you! And just to focus my thoughts on this thing, let's split things up into two parts for this. Starting with... Hit the bodega for 40 ounce son, Garcia Vega. Two bags of chips and one pack of nail leaders. The RZA is one of the greatest producers of all time. Is a phrase I had to keep saying to myself as I was listening to this awful shit. Seriously, almost every track's beat work can be categorized as either sleep inducingly boring or just straight up unfinished. There's one beat on here for Can't Lose that just loops the same two seconds for essentially the whole song. Can't lose. Why? Why? Can't lose. For Sally Why? Can't lose. Why? Why? Can't lose. Definitely lost something. There is one part in the song where the beat sorta of develops, but it's so awkward with how it jerks back into the beat, it just sounds like a mistake. Always speak actual, only deal with natural, 100%, 5%, militant, and aim with the intent, prevent and I I mean, the, the intro to the album is interesting enough. That is, if you don't mind a rap album that starts with RZA getting into bad anime dub acting mode. <laughs> But just listen to the instrumentals he's using to emulate that kung fu music sound. It already just sounds cheap and tawdry. So, in a dragon of a surprise. <laughs> Bobby thought to himself, can he possibly survive? Great dialogue, bro. Then out of nowhere, steam of energy struck. Join energy from the sun. The seven is sounding. And the kids all felt happy. What? You are listening to the Worldwide Digital Radio Show. We play hip hop, earn touch. Oh, so. The anime character needed to charge up energy to be able to host a radio show? Okay... But as the album goes on, we do get a song like Brooklyn Babies, a pipe organ fueled joint with thumping drums and crunchy electric guitar that actually speeds up and slows down throughout the song. 
the Brooklyn baby. I was born up in Kings County. Inside the womb, seven months before the queen found me. Up in Bonnie Brown, still with these around me. Now Rome, Jack and Staten with Queen Team around me. It's honestly one of the best beats he's ever made on this album, anyways. But for every track like that, you get three tracks like Throw Your Flag Up, A Righteous Way, or Build Strong. The first one programmed with a tired-ass trumpet sample that sounds like it's literally putting the rappers to sleep with how labored and stretched out their deliveries are. If you come from Long Beach, throw your flag up. If you come from Compton, throw your rag up. For real, it sounds like even they're thrown off by just how slow this beat is moving. Knuckle up in the spot till someone get dropped, stop, get passed out. Passed out off a pint of that ball, ready to mic ball. Oh my god, and then there's fucking La Rumba. RZA's laughable attempt to light up the barrios with this Santana knockoff. But unfortunately, the whole track is just dull and lifeless, with basic piano stabs and the stiffest trumpet line you ever did hear. And then you get the back-to-back -back drowsiness of Righteous Way and Build Strong. The first where Junior Reed kind of flounders around for the first half of the track before Bobby spits his most lifeless verse of the whole album. Something that we never could understand is what he told me. Saying, yo, I could the ghost be holy. And the second, Build Strong, which is backed by almost nothing but a bass line, some basic keys, and like a loose association of percussion hits one could interpret as a drum beat. A lot of things upset me as my soul rejects me, enemy of myself, physically. Listen, let me tell you about yo. Yo, yo, confused but yet wise. Yeah, do you hear how hollow and fake these drums sound? That plastic sound is all over the album. Like, check out Shady. <laughs> Listen to that hi-hat ride, it just sounds so fake and not integrated into the beat. What is this shit? Fucking Fisher Price, my first drum kit? Meanwhile, the singer is absolutely unbearable. Like, the singers that do hooks on Wu-Tang songs have never been particularly great, but they usually have lush, creative instrumentation to couch the voices in a texture that suits it. Here, this woman's voice is naked in the wind, as you can hear exactly how paper-thin Homegirl's register is. The poor woman stranded on an island with like two notes that actually sound like they're in a range, with everything else outside of that sounding like it's legitimately painful to reach. Oh, 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 oh. Then there's the beatwork of Do You, which at least has a nicely mixed sample in there, but I, I can't lie. Because you can't do me. It straight up just sounds like they're saying doo-doo. Then there's the thin, criminally underproduced Must Be Bobby, laced with a lonely piano line in this overly harsh drum track that feels like it's doing its damnedest to make up for just how light and weak as water the music above it is. Hit the bodega, 440 ounce, Sun Garcia Vega, two bags of chips and one pack of nail leaders. Sounds like school music, like if you had to rap your fourth grade book report or something. I mean, his stuff has always sounded kind of lo-fi before, but it all felt blended into a genuine grimy aesthetic sound. This just sounds like amateur hour, and nowhere near representative of what dude used to be capable of in terms of production. All in all, it's just a huge disappointment beat-wise. Now, if you've heard Riz's voice so far, you'll notice that it ain't exactly the smoothest shit in the world. Like, wow, that's from Show You Love, the first track, and already he's having trouble controlling the editing of his vocals so that it doesn't sound like they're being awkwardly cut off. But uh, coming from the actual producer who put together the unique sound of the woo, that's always been baffling to me. Like, how could this man who could differentiate the vocal ranges of each rapper in the group and tailor the beat to suit the register of their voices from Ghostface Killer's high tenor to Method Man's low baritone, how can this guy not hear how to fit his own voice to a track? So my thugs are who smoke like that? And you choke at niggas living coke like that? I don't know, dude. maybe it's one of those things where it's just hard to hear what objectively works for your own voice, especially when it's as marble mouthed as his delivery is, but it's like, you gotta do something to rein this shit in. Of course, not that it would help that much overall, cause the, even the cleanest vocals can't save some of these awkward ass lyrics. Don't have to come in this shit, they make me blow you! you you've gotta know how that sounds, RZA. And while at least the first track has a fun, goofy opener that you could argue is endearing, by track two, Glocko Pop, all that goodwill gets spoiled as he kicks in with, well. Watch girls pussies get wet, 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 drip, 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 drop, 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 drop. Yeah, and Riz's part really doesn't get that much better from there. Watch my Glock, 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 it goes pop, 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 pop. My Glocko pop, 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 it's rock, pop, 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 pop. My Glocko's pop, 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 my Glocko pop, pop, pop. 
Yeah, that 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 goes on for a while. Oh, and we gotta talk about how he basically tried to make fetch happen with the completely disposable bong bong, an ode to his silly catchphrase. And over such stellar lyrics as this. Ain't no she sucked dick like that with those big fat lips and those hips like that. Yeah, classy. Why them all be niggas try to sing like that? Are you fake crossovers trying to bling like that? Oh, yeah, I'm certain dumbing down your sound with a repetitive rhyme scheme and a catchphrase was purely for the underground heads out there. And boy, oh boy, do things not get any better. Cause about halfway through, we get to the women, am I right, fellas, portion of the album. And it's, it's bad, man. It's, it's really bad. Particularly with tracks like Shady, where the hook is about how their girlfriend caught them cheating, but Riz's verse seems to be about her cheating, like like with a girl, I think. But two of your friends, y'all play the licky licky. I figured it out when I caught that hickey between your legs with your chocolate split beat. Getting mad AT Aliens track five vibes right about now. And if you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'll 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 get to that album soon enough. And then the featured rapper Beretta 9 comes in, and it just has the energy of a dude who's, like, clearly been caught, but he's trying to downplay it anyway. Come on, man, save it, go ahead with that boo. Me like, come on, how that ain't got style. Come on, man, you don't know me by now. Come on, man, nah, that wasn't me. That was, like, my twin brother or something. And lyric-wise, things don't get any better with domestic violence part two. <sighs> Is, like disgustingly, shockingly sexist. Like, honestly, I, I don't even really want to talk about it. You ain't shit, the whip ain't shit, block of book ain't shit, and your friends ain't shit, bitch. Like, everything about it is just icky. From the beat to the lyrics, it, it just gets that sick feeling in my mouth as I'm just talking about it right now. Like, oh, like, like you know that thick milk mucusy feel you get from something you eat when you realize you, you don't enjoy the texture or the taste of it? Like, yeah, that's what the song makes me feel. And fuck, then there's Black Widow 2, and oh god, it's an old dirty bastard solo joint, and like... Look, I love ODB, his was the first album I ever bought, so so I'm acclimated to his bizarre style of humor, but this is just basic nursery rhyme shit, on top of the most blatant, gut-turning misogyny, like, I shouldn't even play a lyric. You know what, I am gonna play a couple from this song, just so you know how bad it gets, but, uh, content warning, guys. Definitely use the right arrow button a few times if you want to skip past some super skeezy sex rhymes. Bitch, so fine, fine, ass can be. Bitch, you know you belong to me. Bitch, no more than Dirt Dog, Dirt MC. Dirt Dog, I know what you about. Bitch, get the fuck out of the car. car. On the third one, start the clock. Dirt Dog, I don't want to die. So shut the fuck up. Let's just move on. Hey, here's a picker-upper. How about we learn a little Spanish? Cause you know what the chorus in La Rumba translates to? This is good because it is the rumba. Well, like your overly featured friend Beretta 9 would say, Come on, man! Also, j just to punctuate how unfun this whole affair is, this is how Beretta 9 starts his verse. I don't wanna dance, baby girl, it's like my legs is on strike. Yeah, guys, let's start a verse with someone who doesn't feel compelled to dance to the song. Now you may be wondering, are there any actual solid songs on this album? And actually, yeah. For starters, like I mentioned earlier, Brooklyn Babies is a legit banger. It starts and ends with like a solid combined minute and a half of his girlfriend cursing him out. So, you know, that's interesting. I'm tired of you coming in at 3 o'clock in the fucking yo, morning. Yo, Nigga, you got a fucking family yo, here. Yo, you act like you don't fucking know that yo. shit. Plus, there's a female rapper named Jamie Summers who fucking kills it on Break Bread. Pussy tight ginger, turn the rough cat to cringer. Make him surrender his car, illegal tender. This is like some female ghost face killer shit. A lot of y'all bitches do good earnings, but two out. Take too many chances, chill with niggas. Jamie home with the real cheese smelling. Take a shot to Louis XIII. And tell you all the cases she's been watching me and beat as me. Like, whoa, and also, what? And Be A Man is an endearingly insane listen. Uh, the soul sample's weird frenetic energy matches Riz's out of control delivery, especially at the beginning. Talking about soya sunrise and prices of food skyrise and foreign countries moving to the USA and the rises now. It's like the sound of someone being pushed out of an airplane, but then they just randomly discovered the ability to fly or something. Plus, Sickness genuinely ends the album in a cool way, with a charging badass bass line, banging drums, and a noisy sample of dogs barking that actually works. The sickness. That's what I want. Like I said, there was supposed to be a movie that maybe would have tied all this together, but as it is, it's just a big sloppy mess, where all the more contemplative lyrics at the end seem like a pose after you just waited through like a full hour of this hedonistic, overwhelmingly bad shit fest of an album. Overall, I'd have to give this album a generous 1.5 out of 5, and 
It pains me to do that, man. But you forced my hand, Rizzo. With these black ass beats, you forced my hand. I don't feel good doing this. Oh, hurt my soul. I gotta go drown my songs in a bottle of wild turkey after I'm done shooting this. Well, thanks for watching. If you want to hear more LP reviews like this, though, uh, let me know in the comments section. Or just, you know, like and subscribe, like we always tell you to do about this time. And if you want to check out my podcast or my social media to catch updates on what's coming next, hit the link tree below. I should have actually put it there this time, and if I didn't, I'll at least have recorded my shame by keeping this take in. So check all that fun stuff out, Blaze 2, and get at me in the morning. Peace.